Check this out. Whenever I press the volume key, I now get this new panel that lets me control the volume for each app individually. Like if I got Spotify playing in the background and I want to watch a YouTube video at the same time, I can lower just Spotify's volume so that the video comes through loud and clear. And it's not just two apps either. I can tweak the volume for as many apps as I want. And I can still adjust the system and notification sounds as well, just like before. The app that makes this possible is called Volume Manager, and yup, it's totally free and open source. Just keep in mind that phone compatibility varies. Here's another fun one. Whenever I'm about to share a link from the web or social media, my phone now automatically cleans it up. It gets rid of all those creepy tracking parameters that it has and thereby makes it a lot shorter too. So when I send it to my friends, they get a clean and simple link instead of some sketchy long monstrosity. The magic behind this is an app called Tarnhelm, uh, which is also free and open source. You gotta admit, that one deserves a thumbs up. And by the way, these are just two out of the 20 apps that I'm showing off in this video that require Shizuku to run. And believe it or not, I was actually the very first YouTuber to discover and talk about Shizuku way back in 2023. Thumbs up for that. And for those who don't know, Shizuku is an app that allows other apps to access system level features without needing root access. In more technical terms, think of it as a bridge between regular apps and system APIs, letting you grant special permissions like write secure settings through ADB, and you don't even need a computer to do it. You can do it all wirelessly right from your phone. I know, it gets pretty technical, but don't stress, you don't really have to fully understand how it works, just that it unlocks a ton of awesome mods for your phone without root. And don't worry, I'll walk you through exactly how to set it up later in the video so that you can authorize all of these Shizuku apps with a single tap. Plus, stick around to the end where I show off the best Shizuku app on this entire list. Anyway, let's jump right in. Digipause is another one you're gonna love because it's going to really help you stay productive. For instance, anytime I hop into Instagram Reels, TikTok, or YouTube Shorts and start scrolling, this big number just pops up in the middle of the screen showing me exactly how many videos I've scrolled through for the day. Or I can even add a live stopwatch showing me how much time has elapsed since I started scrolling. It's pretty useful because you don't really notice how much you're scrolling until it's right there in your face, you know? Plus, the number doesn't even reset if I switch apps. It keeps counting all of my short form binges no matter which app I'm using. It only resets once it hits midnight. But wait, there's more. Digipause also lets you block custom keywords from being searched too. Like I blocked the word Apple and now every time I try to search it in my browser, I get Rick rolled. Classic. It also has a grayscale filter so I can make certain apps turn black and white, which really helps kill the dopamine effect at night. A focus mode as well that auto blocks apps during certain times. A feature where if I open a social app and I try to scroll, I have to wait around 15 seconds to be able to do it and a bunch of other tools to help me stay on track and not lose focus. It's pretty great. Oh, and by the way, only a small percentage of people who watch my videos are actually subscribed. So if you're into this kind of Android content and you don't want to miss out on the next one, hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. I post videos just like this every week and trust me, you're not going to want to miss out on the next one because I have something really big planned. Okay, anyways, let me tell you, I love swiping on the edges of the screen to go back but after using a Samsung phone and getting hooked by all the extra gestures and actions I can do, thanks to their One Hand Operation Plus app, it's hard to go back to any other Android. So I had to find a way to get those extra actions and gestures onto my other phones. And guess what? I found Yubiki Touch. It's exactly what I wanted. You still get the normal back swipe, but if you swipe up or down at any angle, boom, custom actions. For example, I set it so that swiping down on the right edge brings up this little cursor so I can reach the top half of the screen way easier. Then swiping up on that same edge opens up the browser as well. On the left side, swiping up opens up my messages and swiping down pulls down the notification shade. And it gets even deeper because you can swipe and hold in those same spots to do other things. I made it so that it toggles the flashlight or I jump into the system settings. It's kind of crazy how customizable it is. Uh, there are so many options and it even uses Shizuku to unlock extra settings. There's even an option to bring back the old school Pi controls if you're feeling nostalgic. Plus, the animations are buttery smooth. It doesn't feel like a third party app that's trying to copy the system gesture. It feels native. And yeah, if you want, you can even block the original system back gesture entirely. Super useful. Next up is Grayscaler. 
This one's pretty straightforward. It lets you turn your whole screen black and white to help you stay focused. But you can also whitelist some apps to stay in full color. So for apps like the camera, gallery, or photo editing app, which you may not be addicted to, but you still want them to be in full color, this works perfectly. And it's totally free and open source too. You can't beat that. Now, if you ever decide to uninstall the app later on, just make sure to toggle it off first because otherwise your screen might stay black and white even after the app's uninstalled. If you're a fan of that clean, minimal nothing design, you'll probably get a kick out of Widgets Pro. It gives you a whole bunch of widgets that fit that aesthetic feel, like battery widgets, network data, real-time internet speed, and even one that plays a GIF of your choice. All of it just works right out of the box. No KWGT or extra apps needed. But you might be wondering, why does a widget app need Shizuku to run? Well, some of the widgets, like the CPU one, pull live system info. So if you want real-time updates on those specific settings, Shizuku is needed. That said, it doesn't work on every phone out there. For example, that CPU one just didn't show me the stats for my Pixel device, but it did for my Samsung, so your mileage may vary. Oh, and hey, our team also dropped these awesome Android 16 inspired widgets. Super interactive, tons of info, and fully customizable too. We even made matching wallpapers so your whole setup looks super clean. You can grab those on my Patreon link down below. All right, this one's pretty genius. Say you're out and about and you've burned through all your mobile data and there's no Wi-Fi anywhere and you still need to look something up. Enter TextNet Browser. It actually uses SMS, like plain old text messaging, to send and receive data so that you can still browse the web. Uh, it's pretty amazing. So you can check the weather, look up the news, catch the score for a game, or even get Google Maps directions, all through text. Yeah, it's not gonna be the prettiest experience, but it's clutch when you're in a pinch with no internet. And if you've got Shizuku, you can even host your own server using your phone number. Super handy if the public number on their GitHub page is currently down. All right, so another app I've been using a ton and can't actually run without Shizuku is called AutoDND. And it does exactly what it sounds like. It lets you pick specific apps where as soon as you open them, Do Not Disturb mode kicks in automatically. Then when you're done and you close the app, do not disturb mode turns off like nothing ever happened. No more forgetting to silence your phone during a Netflix binge or an important Zoom call. Next up, Empty Manager. This one's easily one of my favorite file managers and here's why. Unlike most file managers out there, MT Manager uses Shizuku to give you access to your phone's root directory without actually needing root access. So yeah, you can peek into any app's data, uh, tweak stuff, move things around and do whatever you want. It's even got a dual window layout, which makes transferring files between folders feel so much faster and cleaner. And then there's install with options. This app is great because it uses Shizuku to give you a ton more control over how you install APKs. Like with Android 14 and up, Google has started blocking some older apps from being installed. For example, I tried installing this classic app from back in the day called Timely Alarm Clock, and my phone just flat out wouldn't let me. But then I tossed the APK into install with options, enabled bypass low target SDK block, hit install, and boom, it worked. No fuss. What's even better is you can have it automatically grant restricted permissions so you don't have to dig through settings and scan your fingerprint every time. You can also use it to grant all permissions in one go, upgrade or downgrade apps without uninstalling them, handle split APKs, and even install multiple APKs at once. And honestly, that's just scratching the surface. There's a whole bunch of extra options packed in there. It's perfect for folks who love sideloading things. Okay, real talk. How many times have you hung up a call, finished a meeting, or gotten out of class and immediately forgotten like half of the things that was said? Addresses, numbers, important due dates, poof, all gone. And unless you've got one of the newest phones or latest Android updates, recording phone calls in the US is just not possible yet. That's why I started using Vaim Rec. Earbuds, the sponsor of this video. On top of letting you listen to music, they also let you voice record anything you'd like in an instant, including phone calls or meetings. Imagine this, you're in a meeting or a lecture. Instead of scrambling for an app on your phone, you can just pull out these headphones, slide the case open, and hit the little record button to start capturing everything that's being said around you. That's it. All without even needing to take the earbuds out of the case. And afterward, you can jump into the Vaim app and it'll use AI to separate the speakers, 
whip up a to-do list from the conversation, summarize the whole thing in seconds, and even let you translate it in 15 different languages. Plus, my favorite feature is that it can even record phone calls. So when you're about to join a call, you can just long press the earbud or tap call in your notifications and bam, everything you say or anything playing off your phone will be recorded, just like that. It even shows you a live transcription in the little pop-up window to let you see what's being said in real time. Super handy. And when you're not recording, they're still really solid earbuds. Great sound quality, immersive noise cancellation up to 48 decibels, and you can tweak the audio settings to make it sound exactly how you like. So yeah, if you've been wanting a super simple way to record calls, conferences, or just to capture your thoughts without the hassle, definitely check out the Vaim Rec Dot earbuds. I'll drop the link at the top of the description. Anyway, Delta is the next Shizuku required app on this list, which I really like. If you ever use your phone's hotspot, uh, this app is super clutch. It basically takes Android's built-in hotspot feature and gives it a bunch of extra powers. Like you can limit how many devices are allowed to connect to it, set it to automatically shut off after a certain amount of time if no one's connected, see a list of all the connected devices, block specific ones from connecting, and even hide your hotspot entirely. So only people who already know the name can actually find it and join it. It's super useful if you're someone who's always using their hotspot and just wants a little more control over it. Now, for all of my fellow Android OGs out there, you probably remember Where's My Droid? That classic app that we used to use to track our lost phones before Google's Find My Device app existed. Well, there's a modern version that's also called Find My Device and it works the same way. Let's say you lose your phone, you can just grab a friend's phone and text your own phone number with a code like FMD and it'll make your phone ring even if it's on silent. You can also use commands to get its location, lock it, toggle some system settings, snap a photo, or even wipe it entirely if things are really bad. Some of the commands take a bit of effort to get it working though, but overall it does the job. And yup, it also uses Shizuku to help it locate the phone even more accurately. Next up is Extinguish, which lets you turn off your phone's screen completely without actually locking it. It's useful if you're listening to a video or running a game in auto mode and want to save some battery. There's a floating button that lets you black out the screen or set a timer for how long you want it off. Once the screen is blackened, the touch screen is disabled, but audio keeps playing. And to turn it back on, you just hit the volume key. Now I know there are other apps out there that already do this, but what makes Extinguish stand out is that it uses Shizuku to take advantage of an Android function to really blacken out the screen instead of just overlaying a black picture that may not provide as dark of an effect. So there you have it. Here's something scary. Did you know that there are a ton of hidden permissions that apps can access that Android doesn't let you control? Any app can read your clipboard, spam toast messages, control vibration, and even keep your CPU awake. That's where AppOps comes in. It shows you all of those secret permissions for every app and lets you turn them off. Works perfectly, but be careful because some apps need certain permissions to function properly. Next, we have Kanto, which is literally the best and easiest way to remove bloatware off your phone. Just open it up, select the junk apps that you wanna get rid of, tap the trash can icon, and boom, they're gone. And if you ever change your mind or accidentally delete something important, no stress, you can just restore them just as easily from the right disabled tab. Plus, I even love that it shows little warning badges next to each app, telling you whether it's safe to remove or if it might break something important in the system. And if you're not sure what a specific app does, just tap on it to see a short description. Super clean, simple, and yeah, it does use Shizuku to get that deep system access. Definitely a great app to have. Man, do you remember when Android actually had lock screen widgets? I've been begging Google to bring them back ever since they disappeared in Android 4.4 KitKat. Well, guess what? There's literally an app that's called lock screen widgets that finally makes it happen. You can add as many widgets as you want, resize them, and place them anywhere on the lock screen. They even stack, so you can swipe through them and have multiple widgets on your lock screen and everything still looks clean. And if your lock screen is still running out of space, there's even a way to have a little drawer that you can swipe in from the edge to get access to even more widgets without cluttering the main view. Super slick. It does require Shizuku to run too, but once it's set up, it's smooth sailing. 
Can you believe it's been nearly six years since dark mode arrived in Android 10 and we still have major apps like Amazon and Airbnb refusing to support it? That's where dark comes in. This old but incredible app forces dark mode on any stubborn app. Just pick which apps you want to fix and boom, problem solved, dark mode. It even supports scheduling the dark mode from the sunset to sunrise times. And yeah, Shizuku makes the magic happen here too. If you're into customization, you'll go nuts for Color Blender. This thing lets you completely overhaul your material use scheme. You can choose any type of style, set custom colors, and if you're rooted, you can go even deeper and adjust lightness and saturation, forcing uncooperative apps to match your theme. It's hands down the best way to personalize your phone's look. Next is a classic, ambient music mod. If you've ever seen that Pixel exclusive now playing feature where your phone just magically recognizes whatever song is playing around you and then it shows it on the lock screen, this app basically brings that same feature to any Android. Whenever there's music playing in the background, Ambient Music Mod will display the track and artist right on your lock screen. No need to open Shazam or anything. It might not be quite as accurate as Google's Pixel version since this one does use a local catalog stored on your phone, but honestly, it still works better than what I expected. It's super cool to just glance at your lock screen and just instantly see what song is playing. Now let me put you on to what might be the most powerful Shizuku app on this entire list, Shizu Tools. This one is just packed with next level features that feel borderline illegal. First up, it's got a built-in debloater, so you can uninstall system apps and finally get rid of that annoying bloatware that came with your phone. Then there's mixed audio, which is awesome. It lets multiple apps play sound at the same time. So yeah, I had Spotify playing music while scrolling through TikTok or watching a YouTube video and nothing paused, it just worked. There's also Soundmaster, which gives you individual volume control for every app, basically like a Windows style volume mixer. And my favorite one, Force Picture in Picture Mode. You can run any app in Picture in Picture, even if it doesn't normally support it. Just pop it out and have it flow on top while you do other stuff. And that's not everything. It can also downgrade apps to older versions, run raw ADB commands, and a lot more. It's a pretty big powerhouse. Anyway, those are 20 of my all-time favorite Shizuku mods released thus far in 2025. Now let's talk about how you can actually get Shizuku up and running so that you can use all of these apps. There are multiple ways to do it. You can go on your computer and type an ADB command, or if you have root, you can simply grant it root access. But for those who don't have those privileges, here's how to do it locally on your phone. First, go into the system settings and enable developer options. Here are the directions on the screen if you're not sure how to enable this hidden menu. Next, open Shizuku and select Parent. Then tap on Developer Options. And from there on that page, scroll down until you see Wireless Debugging, enable that and go into the menu. Once in there, tap on Pair Device with Parent Code. And then you should see a menu pop up with a code. And then a new notification will pop up too that says Pairing Service Found. You can type in the pairing code within the notification and hit send. From there, it should say pairing successful. And once it does, you can jump back into the Shizuku app and on the main screen, you can tap on start. It'll do its thing. And then after a few seconds, you should see some new menus pop up along with one that says Shizuku is running. Finally, to authorize those Shizuku apps, go into the second menu and in there, you can enable whichever ones you'd like. That's it. Just keep in mind that whenever you restart your phone or your phone dies, you'll need to do this process all over again. That's unless you have root. So make sure you save this video for the future so that you don't forget how to do this process again. Thumbs up if you found this tutorial to be helpful. Anyway, tap on this video to learn about how you can get unlimited Google Photo storage forever on your device. Or tap on this one to learn about 20 more amazing apps that you never even knew existed. Thanks for sticking around to the end and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Kapow!